I sense a theme here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z. And I'm Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And where are we? Uh, We're in Oregon, yeah. Coos Bay, UTV Takeover 2021. How are you feeling? <laughs> Red. Sunburnt? I'm fully burnt. If you're doing any better, you would be Ruslan Yankalevich. Yankalevich. You guys mess that up every time, I swear. <laughs> I got it right. No. Say it. Hashtag troll. Ruslan Yankilovich. That's what I said. Yeah, totally. Okay. Play it back. I believe you now. Yeah. <laughs> Try out and a last name like Blomgren. See what, <laughs> see what people do with that. Yeah, they say Blomgren. Bloomgren. <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny is having a last name Jeffers. Mm-hmm. Everybody calls me Jeff. Even though my name's Zach. I tell people it's pronounced Jeffers. Jeffers? Yeah. I call it Heifers. Yeah, Heifers? Heifers. Heifers off-road. That's what it is I'm now. starting a new hashtag Heifers oh. off-road. Heifer. Heffersim. <laughs> That'd be a good shirt. Ha- hashtag heifers off road. Was Zach like in a pose? Hashtag sauce bros. <laughs> sauce bros. <laughs> and we're joined today by, um, oh, for the love of God, Mike Short. Mike yep. Short from WCI Off Road. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. Thanks for having me. So for those that are um, the uninitiated to WCI Off Road, they're out of which city? Harrisburg, Oregon. And what do you guys do there? Uh, we manufacture roll cages for all the UTVs and uh, working on accessories. And then we get to do cool stuff like Ruslan's car. What yeah. kind of accessories? Well, we're working on front and rear bumpers, uh, rear tire mounts, and all different types of different bolt-on accessories. Cool. Yeah. So when you guys uh, talk that you're working with Ruslan, Ruslan, kind of what's going on with your cars? You've you've had, what, a horse stable of, like, what, four cars? Uh, yeah, like nine or ten. <laughs> Mike, I heard he's hard on things. No. Just, that's just a, a bit. Just a bit. He's lying. Yeah. So anyways, you have four cars going on right now, right? As of right now, yeah. Yeah, and so what what just happened over the last... When we talked a little bit on the, on the podcast about what's going on, but you tell us what's going on with your cars. Um, so... Andrew from WCI, which is his partner, Mike, um, I went out to the Glamis Canal when I brought my Turbo S for the first time to get it the cage built, because this I, I picked it up in Oregon um, if North Bend Power Sports, and then I North brought Bend it. Power Sports is a sponsor of TakeOver, so shout out. Right. <laughs> um, we brought it to North Bend. Well, we bought it from North Bend, and we brought it to Andrew, and Andrew built a cage, and I think about a month after that, I went to Glamis, and we thought it was a good idea to jump the Glamis Canal again, and I thought I needed way more speed than I actually did, because I jumped it the first time in an in a four-seater, but I jumped it full speed in a Turbo S, and I ended up overshooting the jump by like 100 feet, and... <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> so you landed straight and clean and, and drove it home? Right, exactly. So that's what happened. <laughs> So, ending up, I landed kind of like to fly, and I went straight through the shocks, buckled the bottom A-arm, and then uh, I bottomed out so hard that the tire went to the rim, and uh, the skid plate, the arm got bent back and stuck on the, where you come up on the skid plate, it got stuck right there, and it it actually stopped the car, and then it bounced up and So, it didn't rebound, it just bounced off of sheer momentum. Kind of, but it did get kind of like stuck to the floor basically right? because it shoved up against the fender wall. So that ended up happening and we rolled like four times Right. and I damaged the whole car in the back half of the frame. So again, we took it to Andrew and Andrew was upset. <laughs> he was, he was mad because he had to rebuild the whole cage again. Not that it was dented. It was the chassis the frame. The whole chassis frame. The, the whole yeah. chassis frame was bent. So it was when, OEM chassis. Right. Exactly. So when we took off the cage, the cage was straight the chassis was like this so the cage was the only one keeping the chassis frame really straight so what you're saying is high quality parts uh save lives of people that do stupid things on big jumps basically basically that's what i'm saying (laughs) so we brought it back and in the meantime i was like hey andrew you want to build a second car and that happened to be the rs1 so this is like what michael like a a month and a half ago yeah yep just about (laughs) so 
a month and a half ago, Andrew built up the RS1, and uh, we took it home with just the chassis frame and the suspension on, and started putting all the parts together. So here we are with the two fully built cars, and then the original canal car, which is the red and black one that with the Pro XP face on it that you guys are seeing now. Um, Andrew built that a long time ago, um, I'd say about three years ago, as a Pro UTV that I was supposed to race, like a bolt-on Pro UTV cage that I was supposed to race, and then I jumped the canal, and it was like oh let's start jumping the car so ever since then those three cars are the ones that andrew has built for me yep. i checked the comment section and everybody's commenting about how much lower your voice is from uh, over last year yeah it sucks <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that i would uh get a lot from is you know people asking how does how does a little guy jump and land hard like that and how does it affect your body and all that how how are you feeling after a tumble like that um, so I remember the, the force of impact, but even though that impact, I can feel like my neck brace in the seat and stuff like that helping me. So the, I, I was running a GTSE from PRP seats when I jumped the canal. And then the first time I was in the four seater, I was running a PRP alpha. So a little bit more of a race seat, and then the GTSE is more of like a everyday fun seat, which is obviously for everybody. And then the Alpha is more of like a race seat. So, so those seats, a lot of people always assume they have to go to a suspension seat. Those seats aren't suspension seats, correct? So the GTSE is a suspension seat. Okay. And then a the Alpha, I think, is a hard shell. Right, because it's the race seat, right? Right, correct. And so the race seats are developed specifically to keep you safe in a situation exactly. like that not by moving because when right. you move you have then tolerances that then break you so right but the gtse actually um unlike a lot of race seats they actually come up around your legs and then it has two little buckets right there so it keeps your legs still so um a lot of people i've seen have had their legs fly up and hit the dashboard and break their legs because of it but the, the gtse actually holds your legs in and it has this little bucket that goes right around your legs that helps you from really moving so i run this uh, this neck product as well called Next Gen. So ever since I've been running those two products, Next Gen and PRP, I've never really had any problems with my back or my neck or anything like that. Now you said you remember the moment of impact. Right. <laughs> so I mean, you don't I remember. Let's go back to that. <laughs> but I, do, I I remember the force of impact, but it didn't hurt. So I do remember what it felt like. But it didn't Did hurt. you feel like a big bag of jelly beans inside of a can, like got thrown <laughs> off a cliff? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so, uh, Mike, when you guys are approaching something like a project with what Ruslan's doing, you know, what are some of the first thought processes, the first few things that you start going through on on coming up with the concept? I mean, it's it's not just a square box of metal tube welded together, right? Well, Andrew, one of his. Uh strongest traits is being able to look at an issue and basically take what we already have and then modify it to what we're going to do so like on your turbo car you don't remember this but you weren't going to bring that up because the cage was good and then the car came up there because uh in my racing background if you flip a car over put it on its roof you always go through Strip it. it down yeah and uh Again, with Ruslan being everywhere. Put it on just, the roof. Wait, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and realistically, that's all he broke. Right. Or Ben. And then once that the car chassis, got not up the, there, not the roof, the roof caved the, in. Oh, just okay. the, the Just the shell. Yeah, yeah. Not the tube. Not the tube. Right, the like shell. The aluminum body on it. Yeah. The pretty part. Right, exactly. <laughs> so anyways, when it Because we all know that Ruslan's pretty. Yeah. I mean, he's a pretty Very boy. pretty and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning. So it showed up to the shop, and uh, as Andrew was taking the cage off, that's when the whole, whole car just kind of fell apart. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can Folded. literally hear it shake. It was just... <clears throat> boom. Yep. Yeah, it, it was sprung, and you took the cage off, and the whole car just sprung. Yeah. So as soon as that happened, Andrew Nixed went, it. Well, all right, here we go. Right. And then fully from the cage, came down into the car and started figuring out where it was going to weld into the frame and kind of Because this is not a bolt-on. This is a weld-on cage. It's not... It, if you wanted to take off the cage, you'd have to chop it off. Right. Yep. Or strip it down to the frame. Right. Yep. So his uh, ability is just bringing all of the cage and kind of the design with Arthur and Ruslan and then just modifying it to exactly what Ruslan needed in the car. 
So when you're looking at doing design work, like prepping the card for what you want, like you said, what are some of those things that you were wanting that you guys thought about? Uh, basically, more strength and integrity in the chassis. So when Ruslan's doing that crazy stuff. When, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep, just when he's doing it, when, uh, you know, just like the canal, um, building the bump stops, Andrew came up with a pretty phenomenal design for the bump stops on the rs1 car like, like andrew's like like i can't even put a sticker straight on a car it's always sideways like andrew's just like with his fingers he's like checking it out and he's like yeah right there and then it's like completely straight mm -hmm. like it's it's just weird some people are just talented that way where they can vision they can envision it done and mm -hmm. the process is to get there and then they can know they have like the sixth sense that says that's going to work or not work or that's going right. to line up or not line up right they're whatever. like Right, like, right, like, right there, right, so, no, and right there. The entire time that Andrew's building Ruslan's car, he's also running our entire production line of UTV cages. So, it, yeah, right. So I, I mean, was going to bring that up. You guys yeah. do a full fab shop of production yep. cages for some local people as well as yourselves. Yep. Um, and so you work with uh, Addiction and and some of those guys. Uh, BJ was on the show yesterday. Absolutely. Um, and uh, kind of give us a rundown of the park line you guys are running over there. Uh, pretty much, if you have a UTV in the sports industry, we have a cage for it. So Can Am, Polaris, Honda, um, Kawasaki, Yamaha. Yamaha, you name it. Um, Andrew's basically got a design for it. Uh, I was just talking with um, the gentlemen up at uh, Camper Corner, and they were just like, we, we've been waiting forever to go get a cage, and he's here, so we're going to go talk to him about it. Yep. Right. So yep. everybody's, everybody's taking notice of the product quality you're putting out, and it, yep. it speaks to it. Are you getting mostly like in, uh, end users, rec riders, or are you getting hit up by uh, race guys, stunt all, guys? For, all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. Ruslan's brought uh, quite a bit of attention to our custom side, so... Um, my razor that's here we have our spec race cage on it so just we brought stuff that's a little outside the box of what everybody's aware of that we do um, and in the future we're going to continue down that line on the custom side just so we can continue to enjoy the sport yeah how many uh how many events have you been to for here at cruise with takeover this is my first event um I actually purchased the company at the end of the year. So um, I've been here as a spectator, uh, but not as WCI. And you're on number three? Where's number one? three? You. You. I'm this, on number three. This is your third? Oh, this is so here um, here at Coos, we are, yes, third year. Because I came here 2019 and uh, won... I believe third place in the NA jump for 60, like 62 foot. 60. That's like baby stuff for you now. Right. That's like, like, that's like not even my average everyday jump. Yeah. I, I think I got a picture of you on my Yamaha. I, you were like 10 or something oh, like that. Oh yeah. 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 This is when I got first, first, first This met is you. when you were on the big four seater chasing Blake and I around. Yeah. I remember <laughs> that. And then I got stuck in, the, in this ditch. I don't even know if Blake has the video anymore, but I got stuck in the ditch and uh, Blake you, was supposed to. You mean a whole bunch of bushes. Right. Yeah. And, and bushes with like <laughs> thorns in them. And I was thinking about going through it and Blake was like, cause there's, there's like a huge dip and I'm just on the side of it. And I mean, this car is what putting 60 horsepower to the wheels and <laughs> Blake's just like, you just gonna floor it and go that way and i was like okay so this is like when i first started out driving like first started out and blake was just like floor it dude floor it so we had to floor it all the way out and it the back tires worked were, so you, right, just, you it, just drift it, off the hill basically so it was like this i was driving on the side of the hill just out of it yeah we call that fun now right yeah. <laughs> yeah. so what's the, what's going on with that car it, it's, um it, it's retired so uh, we were supposed to retire it because it it broke every time <laughs> I drove it. <laughs> so, I mean, we snapped the diff, break the transmission, you know, everything broke because it's a, it was an old 20, no, I wouldn't say old, but I drove really hard and it did burnouts, donuts, tried to do four wheel drive burnouts. Um, snapped, jumping a canal. Right. Jumping a canal, snapped <laughs> the diff in it. Um, and it did, I mean, everything was breaking. So we were just planning on retiring the car. And then, so that car actually had a ton of mods on it. That one had a fully built motor. 
um, ground up, I mean, everything in there was supposed to be pushing a lot of horsepower. Um, and then we had a supercharger on it that was like kind of mounted to the side of the motor, which was actually pretty sick because it wasn't really anything anybody seen. What was that on there when you did the canal jump? So no, I jumped the canal jump naturally aspirated so all that That's 60 horsepower right exactly yeah, i don't think anybody knew that right so <laughs> in 60 to 80 at least because there was a honda talon that did a dyno and it was like 80 horsepower to the wheel so between 60 and 80 is what i was making so it was and that's like a 50 foot 60 foot gap somewhere in no, there no it's like i mean i'd say from all right so there's little roads that you can drive on which are like 15 foot a piece yeah so lip kind of like a table table and then it's curved in so canal is like i'd say 70 feet the little canal crevice but on the top of it it's like go 90 feet because it's shaped like this so so, over, so overall you're looking at about 120 130 feet right so when i overshot the canal I landed, per se, 60 foot down more the runway Right. Right. than I did the last time. Because if you don't remember, I kind of landed like this. So in the four-seater, I probably th- did like 100 foot. So I landed way farther down the runway, though. So I was in the four-seater, I was probably going, this is more like a hard-packed sand where it's at. So it's really easy to grab speed. So in the four-seater, let's say I was going about 45 miles an hour maybe probably less for all i know the turbo s i was going 63 miles an hour because that's appropriate right very <laughs> so i it, mean that was really what came down to was just right. way too fast well uh, that i was looking at i landed halfway down the runway so i was in the sweet spot but you know i was flying 30 foot out of the air onto the ground so like sunset we were on a downhill like it was a steep downhill too but i flew so high out of the ground the shocks completely bottomed out so uh when we're talking about jumping a canal and you know we've already (laughs) i was just getting there was you know initially it was like holy crap we did it share it all over the place and then all of a sudden everyone's like yo we gotta talk about this right and so you got in a little bit trouble for that and so yeah i did get in trouble um I don't he just rolled his eyes for all our our listeners. Right, yes. <laughs> so I did get a fine for it because yeah. I, I apparently, from what they told us. The the first jump or the second jump? The first jump. Okay. I didn't get in trouble for the second one, surprisingly. Uh, Baru Land Management says that that used to be a, a land mine and nobody is allowed to be on the other side of the canal. So they're concerned for public safety on that side of the canal, basically. Basically. There's landmines out there? That's what they said. I don't know if they said that just to scare us. Hey, but I know you're only 12, but let's just talk really quickly about how full <laughs> crap the federal government is. So Right, exactly. Yeah. That's what we were thinking, so we were just like, whatever. But there was pro- yeah, no. we were th- they, they removed those landmines years ago. Right, probably. <laughs> so what, what they failed to tell you was those landmines were cow patties. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the second time I jumped the cow, I got... All right, so I was supposed to do it with Duna Destroy. The whole thing, how the second canal even happened, we were never going to do it again. So I've done the canal before after the first canal without filming it because I got in so much trouble the first time. We never did it again on video. So Duna Destroy was like, do you want to come jump the canal with me? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So he was like, all right, you dare me on the podcast because we were doing a podcast with Dirt Light Show. Uh, back in Cali. Shout out George Hamill. Right, exactly. Um, so he was like, yeah, dare me to do it, and we'll both do it. And I was like, all right, fine. So the podcast started. I mean, the last kind of the part said, I dare you to jump the canal. And we were like, all right. So on Saturday, we headed out to Glamis, and as soon as I got there, John's like, I'm not going to do it. And I was like, <laughs> and he was like, maybe, but I'm probably not going to do it. And I was like, why? He was like, oh, because the cops are going to get me, blah, blah, blah. And like the guy that just jumped the truck over the canal, because there was a guy that did it in a truck, but not a side-by-side. And 
He like a, a full size truck or something? It's uh, it was a like, or a, like pre-runner. a pre-runner. Okay. It was a pre-runner that jumped it, but kind of like landed it really smooth. So it was like this is peak. He landed like right here. Gotcha. So kind of like your first job, right? Basically, <laughs> but he landed like 15 foot further, so he cleared it perfectly. So there was like and it was like easy basically. So he was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna do it," and he bailed on me. And I was like, that's all so right. So this sounds like a really big, <laughs> long lead up to, of you calling out Dune and Destroy I'm to go to Huckfest Hill and throw down with you. He's, hey, he's, they're right behind us. Let's just go talk to them real quick. <laughs> right? <laughs> no. So he's doing Huck Fest with us. That's what he says. So he's going to do the Huck Fest. But we have a track record. This is, right. we, <laughs> this is starting to turn into professional wrestling right here. <laughs> so, I'm calling you out. <laughs> so he bailed on us. So You uh, bailed on me, brother. What a, <laughs> so we went. We went Snap into a shock system. <laughs> So we went we went to the Glamis Canal anyway. We went there. And I was still going to do it. And this guy, Desert Whips, he was trying to talk me out of it for like 45 minutes. And As he should have been. Right. And he <laughs> was like, bro, you, you shouldn't do this, blah, blah, blah. And then five minutes later, I hopped in the car after the thing. Um, they were like, all right, flip a coin. And if it's heads jump the canal if it's i don't know what the other side tails if it's tails welcome to america we have coins with heads and tails on them <laughs> right exactly so he said if it's tails you don't jump it so he flipped it and it landed on tails and i looked at it and i said no you got to put the you got to put it on your hand you got to put it on the top of your hand so he flipped it and i got to jump the canal <laughs> I'm so glad. in reality, you wanted to jump the canal, right? Right. Yeah. 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 I was still going to do it anyway, even though it was. <laughs> <laughs> so um, look what you got yourself into, bro. Right. Yep. And you, so you can hear in the video, if you watch the video again of the other side where I'm landing, you can hear John's wife from Dune and Destroy crying in the background. Oh, is that who that was? Yeah, that's John's wife. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So what I so what I'm hearing is I, I, all these people are motivating you to do this because they get recurring business out of right, you. <laughs> exactly. My goal when I jump to the canal, yes, 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 yes. Or yeah. or is it like Christmas where the kids like I really want that I gotta break the one I have now so I can get the new one. <laughs> right. Ultimately, I think that's what it is. Right. I yeah. saw this kid like on Christmas. He had like an old Samsung, and his dad brought him like an iPhone 12, like just the case, and he smacked the phone on the ground and he opened the package and there was no phone. Like I feel like I feel. Like that's how it is. <laughs> I truly think Ruslan just tries to test Andrew's ability. Almost. Yeah, that's. That's how it goes. You're just driving him to do better. Yeah. Yeah. So See, you have your new car. <laughs> it's all progression. I mean, UTVs, in my opinion, <clears throat> are safer than motocross bikes. It is. But like. Hundred percent. But like in your case, I'm almost wanting to push you towards moto because it might actually be safer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you get a little more control. When the whole moto thing happened with when I jumped the canal the first time, there was this one guy that was actually supporting me, like the only person that really did besides BJ Baldwin and some of the big influencers out there. Um, there was this one guy that commented and he was like, you guys are hating on the kid for jumping a canal with a safe roll cage, neck harness, and a race suit. But there are kids out there sending almost 200 foot doubles on a KTM 85 with no seatbelt, no roll cage, and can fly off the bike anytime and land on the floor. I mean, he's not wrong, man. I watched Davey Millsaps go 200 feet at age 12. And we, we just had a recent, you know, situation in Moses Lake where someone passed away from not making the jump, right? Terrible. And so, you know, those real, those are sad realities that people don't take into consideration. And, and the reason I asked you about, you know, how you're, how you're, what you're using in the car is we've talked with like Al Macbeth. Every single time we talk with Al Macbeth, we bring up the, the point of safety, like what, what you guys are doing. It's not safe. It's not safe. It's specialized. And even though these cars can have the capability of sending it like that, they don't have the capability of keeping you safe in that scenario. And you have to invest the time and money and research and engineering and all that stuff, along with the proper safety equipment, to guarantee that you're going to walk away from that event. Yeah. When I I jump 30 feet, I'm like, yep, that's a chiropractor appointment. When, When are you jumping 30 feet? Come on out with me. All right. 
Yeah. Can you show me. You bring your little. Uh, for mi- my baby can am. Bring your little <laughs> miniature X3 on out there. <laughs> my little DS. Hey, I'm getting some uh, some paddles from um, from Addiction, so uh, maybe we can see if we get that thing. We can put all up. of that raging 120 horsepower to the ground. Dude, I'll tell you what. I was out with Buggy Whip, or not Buggy Whips. You were out with Buggies. I was out with Blake Wilkie, and that little bit thing with the big horns on six and a half bald bald big horns on six and a half pounds. I was keeping up with Wilkie in his bug. I think I speak on behalf. Now he of, was not full <laughs> throttle. Yeah, I speak on behalf of everyone that you literally sitting in that. It looks like you're in an RZR one seventy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the big guy little car syndrome, for right? Real. It's like a giraffe and a Miata. Yeah, oh. yeah, no, for sure. But uh, I, I, I think that car has enough horsepower and and is small and light enough that if I put the paddles on, I might be able to get that thing nose up and get it get it running with you. Let's do it. I say we throw it down. Let's do it. So, anyways, um, yeah, what do you got going on today? Uh, today, I'm not sure. <laughs> but <laughs> well, let's we, talk about the week. I was going to ask you about your schedule, so like which events are you I'm in? supposed to be doing, I'm supposed to be, I don't know what they, like, is supposed to be doing today, but we're supposed to be doing rally. Um, so, and then short course, which is same day as jump day, the um, Hill Fest and Hut Fest. How do you like Hill Fest? I've actually never done it before, but when I watched it, everybody was breaking their cars and rolling. <laughs> so I think that's maybe a negative, but <laughs> but it seems super duper duper fun. So to anyone that's not familiar with the the event here at Takeover, Hill Fest is a big sand hill with a bunch of trees in the middle. It's a rally course on the side of a hill. <laughs> on the side, you go up at like a forty five degree. You come hairpin down yeah. at a forty five degree, which we all do. Which we all do, right? Yeah. And then you throw your car into a berm that's developed, and you try to hairpin again up the hill through the trees and you do the same thing again down through the trees and you do it again up around the trees it's it's kind of a polaris dominated event i think that short wheelbase i'll and tell that you what really i saw helped. some high horsepower yxes that you would figure be nimble and fast and all that and i have yet to see one finish the without either missing the, the transition or, or stalling or bearing high horsepower yxz guys have mullets miller light and freaking running two wheel <laughs> drive that's why all you haters can go after the guy that used to own a yxz how we doing <laughs> so check me out on tiktok baby <laughs> <laughs> and uh so last year uh bj from addiction won it um okay. he threw down pretty hard and actually he took one of your friends with him yeah, in right. the passenger seat right. i didn't even know that was like one of your fr- i thought it was like some like employee's Random kid, kid right. or something <laughs> I saw the the little guy in there. I was like, maybe that's Ruslan. Like I didn't, because he doesn't have a boy, right? He just has a daughter. Right. So I was like, Who, maybe that's Ruslan or something. But but yeah, no. Oh. So Hill Fest is cool. It's a lot of fun. You see a lot of guys get on two wheels and and do all that. So I'm excited to see you out there. <laughs> you doing Wheelie Fest? Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna try at least. Did you need my X3 so that we can do wheelies? <laughs> I would never drive that. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about we just like put a Groucho Marx costume dis- uh, uh, disguise on you and uh, go for a ride in it before you make that kind of decision? Mm, still no. Yeah. <laughs> I'd still rather drive mine. <laughs> so last year you did Wheelie Fest, but you were using one of the addiction. Um, Cars. It was no, it was, uh, it was Cody Glory. from yeah. Old Glory. Oh, that's right, Old Glory. Sorry, yeah, right. That yeah. thing rips. It, it, yeah, it did. But the thing about it is, I was running 35s doing the competition on knobbies, so I only my farthest wheelie I think was like 36 feet. Right. So that was my farthest wheelie, but now is I that was, the farthest wheelie you've ever done, or have you done further? So I've done wheelies that, like, if I'm just driving with my sister or something, like, I've done wheelies before without really, like, uh, not saying that I haven't done it, but uh, we don't <laughs> film it, really. Like, so I what t- I heard was yes. <laughs> yeah, so I have done a wheelie before, but not really posted or filmed. So when we first got the Turbo S, I wheelied it on these, like, two little rollers. So you'd floor it on the first one, and then you'd land, and your front end would come up, and you would kind of jump your rear end, and it would catch, and you'd wheelie for, like, I'd say, like, at least More than three, 80. right? Yeah, more than 30 at least. Like, <laughs> I'd say my longest was like 80 feet. But I've never really done anything farther than that. You like it? Because I always say... Kind of. It's I always, weird. I I'm always, always scared like, of catching the rear end. Like um, UTV Obsessions, they were is. like, whoa, I'm scared whoa, 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 whoa. Of ca- I'm scared of catching the rear end. Let's get. Let's go back to the canal and jump back. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's no catching stuff in the air. For real, yeah. We'll bust off a 100-foot jump, no problem. Right. <laughs> so you were just saying about UTV well, Obsessions jumping, last year, catching their bumper and, and rolling right. their car over well, and over. Well, jumping is something that I do, 
but wheelies are something probably that like Mr. Dreadman over here, Brandon does. It's a technique for right. sure. He's like, he knows how to like, just like sense that. So he's just like, when he hits the gas, he knows how to use his brake and his gas at the same time. But I drive with one foot. He drives with two. So it's a little bit off for me. I don't right. really do wheelies because if I'm doing a wheelie, like I try to do it on a three wheeler and I didn't even hit the brakes. I just let it go back. I was, uh, and I fell off the bike. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. I know, right? <laughs> so you're dragging on that little chrome part that's like kind of round because I always stand up doing wheelies. So on racers, wheelies are like a whole different perspective compared to like quads and dirt bikes and stuff like that because you actually kind of have control over the whole thing and stuff like that. But side by sides it's more of like you depend on your brake and your gas almost the whole time yeah brandon grew up on moto and snowmobiles that kind of, that that feel right. for that that center right uh, he's, Wait, he's if i'm on a dirt bike i'm either looping out or i do the wheelie perfect like i don't i just don't have you, that you'll get there dude the i've brakes. always i've always told people once you've done wheelies that's all all you want to do and, and my fingers are too short so when i try and even reach for the brakes i'm like so speaking of Brandon, uh, he went and tes- tested out the Huck uh, oh Hill last. Uh, was it yesterday? Um, uh, correct. Yeah. And uh, sent it sent it pretty good. And um, yeah, his shocks look like a J now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's he's rebuilding the front end of the car. Uh, hopefully he's got that thing dialed for, sure. um, for this weekend because it'll be a good show. I think it would. the Huck Hill that they've got out there this year is probably the best ever set up for flying. Now, that being said, it's to a flat, and we're trying to figure out how to fix that. Yeah. But um, Forgive me for not knowing, are you competing in Huck? Or yes, are you put, I am. Are, Okay, cool. I think I said that like nine times. No, already. I didn't know if you were if you were putting on a show. No, or could, so. Yeah, yeah um, so only. Because Al, Al's putting on Al's a show. Al's exhibitioning. Got He's it. not competing. Right, so yeah. so the, the gap that's on his jump, is, I think, is around 130 feet, something like that, to the top. Um, yeah. And o- so Oklahoma was 100 flat. Right. But 30 foot is like, I mean, 30 foot's... A split second. Like, yeah, literally. So 30 foot... The biggest thing that we're concerned about is landing and where where you're going to land and how you're going to land. And then the fact that you're going to be going straight into the wind. So when you get up there and you're at nose high and the wind catches you, you're either going to go higher and then drop straighter or you're going to start, you know, going ass down and then, you know, possibly landing on your rear. So uh, there's a lot of complications in, in all that kind of design stuff. And, and Al's supposed to be helping them dial that in this this weekend. So hopefully it's a good good right. show. So um, when me and Brandon hit the jump, because I hit it as well, um, I think what the guy told me is that I went 105 foot on the test run and so did Brandon. Yeah, he went, he went roughly around 100, 110, something like that. Right. She said, we both did 105 to around 110 max. Mm-hmm. So me and Brandon went, so Brandon, as of right now, is running 2.0s in the front and 2.5s in the rear. Well, not anymore. Not anymore, right. <laughs> but, I see what you did there. <laughs> maybe he's just about 2.5s right now, but... Um, now the new setup for almost every Polaris Razor that even comes stock is 2.5 and 3.0. Right. Except my XP. <laughs> Except for your pro. Four-seater. The one the bit's bigger and heavier. Yeah. But why would you put 3.0 on a 2,400-pound car? <laughs> no need. No, no need. But uh, I think that... So what What are you running on your jump car? What kind of shocks are you running um, on? I'm running King Shocks on 2.5s. That's, a, bi- that's the, a big upgrade this year, right? It, it is, right? It's, an, it's a new upgrade, too, isn't it? it a very new upgrade. Yeah. So we did 2.5s in the front, 3.0s in the rear, and then we use the King Nitrogen Bump Stops. So those would help a lot. So like uh, our good buddy Colton, Colton Bybee, um, he runs. He's, he's running a YXZ, right, custom exactly. YXZ build. Um, he's been running bump stops for a, a couple of years now, um, but his were tucked inside. Mm-hmm. But now they're tucked outside. Right, where there's less leverage to, right, exactly. to compress them quicker. Right. So um, we we did that. We put bump stops on the car, and our good buddy Al Macbeth does as well. Mm-hmm. So we decided to make that upgrade to help it. So when you're, have you actually gotten into those bump stops and, and yes, felt I the have. change of how that affects the car so and everything? So it, it does feel different. You can, it feels different. So we tried to turn the shocks down and test the bump stops. So we turned them down 13 clicks and it was still soft landing. And then we hit the bumps and it just like, it felt like I, it felt like I, the shocks compress and then just like, right. 
Like it, it was different. It was a different feeling. Like like, like, all, like right. all the air just quickly kind of just whoo. Right. It's like if I felt a bottom out and it's just whoo. Okay. So that being said, how, how many jumps prior to working with King, how many jumps had you done on a fully tuned suspension? Like nothing. Uh, Okay, this is life changing then. Right. Yeah. No, I, this is good. <laughs> so, so what he's saying is he's jealous uh, that you have King no, Shock on no, your car. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. <laughs> I'm stoked. I had no idea. Like, I, I figured some, you know, a tuner or something had worked with some of those because I mean, we've seen him hit some really, really big stuff. So the fact that you're working with like a trophy truck <laughs> level right. company that's bitching. Yeah, no, and Al awesome. just went to King Shock yeah. this year as well. As well, yeah, right. Yeah, so you guys so, have all got some big upgrades this year. Right. So. The reason why me and Al moved to King was, I, I mean, I've known King for years. I mean, I'm good friends with the owner. And they're down south where you live anyways, right? right? Correct. So. Um, they're located just around Garden Grove, which is about an hour from my home. So I'm really good friends with the owner and at the same time, really good friends with everybody that works there. So Al hit me up and was like, hey, do you want to do you want to go get some kinks? Because he thinks it's a it would be a better opportunity for the both of us. So we both said yeah and we went to king and we got ourselves some shocks yeah i can't wait to see you guys uh see the cars how they perform i mean i'm right. i'm the kind of the the technical nerd that likes to look at the components and how they work in geometry right. and geometry and all that kind of stuff which you brought up colton that yxz completely rebuilt this year is going to be right. pretty killer have and you he, seen the turbo on the back of that thing yeah he's holy he, crap he's got it pretty well built and the whole front end suspension was redesigned and rebuilt and all right. that so stuff and he sent it pretty good at utah um, and he got kind of sideways with it a little bit, and I know that kind of upset him. But uh, he went pretty far. He got like like second or third um, place, basically. So he got second, right? Um, so Col Colton, when the cars come stock, they actually come to the top arm, as of all side by sides. So as of right now, he put it to the bottom arm. So right. like like Al shocks because they're mm -hmm. on the top arm, um, the shocks stick out of the hood because I believe the rear shocks are actually in the front. So Colton uses Can Am shocks. So it's a back Can-Am shock with a front Can-Am shock, but Can-Am shocks are really long. Right. So he put them in the front, and he put the shock. It looks to pretty the mean sticking out the hood right. like that. It's a whole different look. And with those bum stocks on the outside, I told him it looks like Drac like a Dracula card, just right. with some fangs hanging on it. Right. Exactly. So that, that's the RS1 looks like right now. It's got bum stops literally sticking out the side of it. It's pretty sick. Yeah, I can't wait to see it to see it run. Um, so uh, we're at Takeover uh, 2021. Coos Bay. It's pretty epic. I mean, the show started Tuesday before anyone was even here. Uh, parties and vendors already what? starting to sell stuff. And I know you you were in, you weren't out here. I I literally we finished filming about five hours ago. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, we were out with Buggy Whip and Buggy Whip. Oh, you were filming last night? Yeah. I mean, Buggy Whip's all about that uh, that light life. about that nightlife and uh, just of we were course. we were getting some really cool reflection shots off some of the water. sitting water out here. Yeah. We'll make sure you get a hand get get some cool. of that stuff. It. Cool. Uh, I found out that there is a can in the C three hundred actually does do okay at night. <laughs> <laughs> the three hundred does. All right. Yeah. Uh, but they brought a whole cool, uh, what was it, Haunted Talon uh, car with a full front gimbal arm and, and some nice glass. And yeah, everybody's freaking out about that thing. But let me tell you, the, the, the Coos Bay sand is very unforgiving. And there's there's some hits that will just face plant that camera. So, I mean, if you just want to blow up a $10,000 camera, by all accounts. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a possibility with these cars. But you can't do it without a car, like a, a sand car like a, or a Yamaha or something. Have you guys either. ever drove the Talon? Uh, I have not. Isn't it a little funny that the, that we put a boom stand on the roughest riding car there yeah. is in the market? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what we notice. It bucks a lot. It, it bounces around a lot. It kind of just jerks back and forth a lot. Um, kind of similar to, a, the YXZ, to the YXZ, but just not, a little that's bit more all right. bucky. Ruslan's going to introduce him to King Shocks. We'll get that all fixed <laughs> up. <laughs> all right. So to wrap this up, we're at Coos Bay UTV Takeover 2021. It's been a great time so far. We're only two days in, and it feels like it's already Friday night. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm yep. already exhausted. I crashed last night. Just I let did. us jump already. Yeah. Well, I mean, you already no, know. You got to go run Hillfest, man. That's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost just too tired for it. So, uh, I think this is going to be probably the the event that makes me the most tired I've been in a long time. So, well, the funny funniest thing is, is uh, it, everybody knew this was going to be the biggest UTV takeover ever, and Absolutely. it was on Tuesday. 
on Tuesday. So, so it, brought, it wasn't even open. We brought a bunch of new like lifestyle apparel for the UTV takeover, like over twelve hundred whatever pieces of uh, stuff. And they figured, you know, we'll sell out maybe some of this stuff on Saturday night or whatever. They they basically sold out yesterday at noon. Wednesday at noon. Shows show has officially been open three for hours. Three hours sold out. Basically had lines through the through the tables through vent cut the food trucks how, and all how, that stuff. How do you account for that? That's like. I yeah, mean, they're we, shipping everything they had from the other events planned, so they're going to ship the other events apparel over and then reorder their, <laughs> the apparel for those events. It's unreal. I think a few vendors out here are feeling that already. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. How, how are you doing at the show? Fantastic. A lot of traffic? Yep. Yeah, I, I've yep. noticed that, too. It's nuts. Yeah, we've got Ruslan's cars over in the booth, yeah. and the RS1 just... Come check them out. Yep, yeah. the RS1 yeah, you, you're just... You're right behind us, and yep. uh, just been nonstop traffic, and you're on cruise row, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. How you liking that dust life? Dust life is fine, but... See, uh, seeing the same car five times per hour cruising <laughs> yeah you know it's just like bro there's dunes out there the same song too yeah, yeah. The, they same. always have to have the radio up did too they, right did they change yep. it from old town road at least as, as long as they moved on from that i'm good Probably. yeah yeah for all i know there's that eight year old you remember that that's like everybody was bumping that song right. well yeah. now it's the, the the rolling song that's off tiktok oh what? no yeah, yeah that's the one everyone's yep. doing rolling song yeah no, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, good. I'm not going to say it. Yeah. So that, yeah. Good. All right. <laughs> you said rolling. I thought Limp biscuit. So. Oh, wait. <laughs> is that what it is? No. <laughs> you're just old. Yeah. No, I don't know what it is. All right. I thought about it for a second. We don't need to add any Rick extra rolling sounds through Vendor Row like, we ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Let's wrap this up. Uh, take over 2021. Coos Bay. Uh, find us on TikTok. Did you just say that? <laughs> I was waiting for it. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Instagram. Podcasts, all those different places. Instagram. Ruslan, where can they find you online? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, Ruslan Facebook, underscore Grease Hands with a uh, Z. TikTok. Yeah. You're on TikTok? Yeah. Wait, what's TikTok? I don't know. Like, right. I don't know either. Isn't it Reels? Reels? Like Reels is the new thing. Cool. Sweet. All right, so you can find us online. Uh, Mike, where can we find you guys? Instagram, Facebook, and uh, website is coming very soon. <laughs> so WCA You're not the first road. brand here to say that. Uh, yeah, there's well, a lot Mike, of guys working on their websites. Yeah. As far as websites go, I know a guy. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know. He's, uh, done, he's done a few. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but what's your, what are your handles? Uh, WCI underscore off-road for Insta. Uh, Facebook is just WCI off-road. Great. And yep. your website will be WCIoffroad.com. Awesome. Yep. I sense a theme here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate your consistent Simple. branding. It's, it's, good. it's right. a good idea. Awesome. All right, nice. guys. Until the next time. Peace.